Hello YouTube, I'm Tekosachu and this is a Men of War Assault Squad video. Um, let's see, so two things before we begin while we wait for things to load, uh, this is a 3v3. Uh, number one, I posted a video a while ago that you might have missed because I then subsequently uploaded like a bunch of Mech Warrior Living Legends gameplay, so in case you're not following me very closely, um, you can go back and find that video, I'll probably post a link to it here if I don't forget. And number two, somebody sent me a video, um, it's a 1v1 in a canyon. I have not forgotten about you. I will cast that at some point and put that online. I've watched the first four seconds. Those were very good four seconds. It was a loading screen, but um, there was good stuff there, but I haven't gotten around to it. So anyways, this game uh, today is a 3v3. Not the most amazing game, but hopefully it should be fun to watch. Uh, at least we can watch me drag this little ready-to-play box around. You notice how it sticks to the edges when you get pretty close. I'm not sure why they coded that. Um, maybe that happens to all the UI elements in the game, but really the only things you can drag are the inventory and the map once the game starts, so unless the inventory sticks to the edges, I'm not really sure what the point is. So anyways, we are playing as the Russians, and I believe our opponents are the Germans, and um, it is this map that you have grown to know and love. Um, I love the Assault Squad developers for uh, making all the patches like free and not just like bug fix patches free of course those are free but they add new content like they add a new um, models and stuff that they made the t-34 prettier we'll see that later in the video actually they made helmets prettier and they added new units and stuff so all that stuff is free and very few developers are cool enough to do that you look at battlefield 3 charging like eight hundred dollars for like five guns or whatever anyways um, so the men of war developers are cool like that but um, the way they do make some of their money is by charging for the dlc map packs and that's kind of a weird strategy because, like, you know, if nobody buys the map packs, which I think is largely the case, then no one's going to play the maps. And if you buy the map pack but no one else does, still nobody's going to play the maps. And so it just ends up everybody plays the same maps, the ones that came with the base game. And there's a limited subset of those that people play because some of the maps suck. So, um... I feel like kind of a jerk asking for everything for free from Digital Mindsoft because they do give us the free updates and obviously the only income they have, aside from more people buying Assault Squad, is from the DLC map pack, so I don't want to take that away from them. But on the other hand, I'm getting kind of tired of like the same old maps all the time. And of course you can play mods too, but then everyone has to download the mods. There's actually a really nice mod, the uh, map pack mod, updated map pack mod, community map pack mod, I don't know. Um, that's a good one. It's got a lot of maps, and sometimes I see people running that. So, um, Google something. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a link here if I remember. So, um, anyways, you saw me early, right off the bat, sending in my guys to set up some sandbags. Just a um, typical rifleman squad, um, which you buy because it comes with the machine gunner and stuff. So, um, I did get mowed down by that scout car the opponent sent to harass me, but not everybody died. I got some behind that building. So, Really, I bought an AT Rifleman so I could fight off that scout car if it comes again, and then I started salvaging things. And so now you'll notice that once I've secured this point, I'm really not worrying too much about setting up defenses. My sandbags never got up, but unfortunately if they're in the middle of being built when the guys die, then the sandbag thing goes away. Like, I tried to scavenge for sandbags from the dead people so I could build them again, but they didn't have them, because they sort of got half used up. I don't know how that works. Anyways, that didn't work out, so I'm not even going to really worry about setting up a defense um, over there. Luckily, my AT Rifle squad somehow got split up. There's the helper guy who managed to get to the left faster than the guy with the AT rifle. Maybe because he's carrying less heavy stuff. But anyways, he got he went ahead, he got shot, that sucks. So now my AT rifle guy is here. Um, he's probably going to get himself owned too, which is unfortunate. Um, I should not have been quite so brazen, but I was hoping to just get some lucky shots, especially with the rear armor of that AT gun, or sorry, of that armored car facing me. I was hoping to get some lucky shots, but um, I've been mostly wiped out. But anyways, like I was saying, I haven't spent time reinforcing this point, or even defending this point. I have like two guys there, one of them behind a sandbag off to the side, and another one just chilling out over on the right. So um, I'm refocusing and heading towards the middle, because um, you pretty much have three options when you're in my position. I'm over on the far right. You can consolidate and just do a really good job of trying to defend that point. I don't know, even set up mines or something by some AT guns. I don't know, whatever. Try and do a really good job of defending that point. That's your first option. I don't recommend that at all. Um, it's just too passive. It's not going to get anything done. It's like, hooray, you're defending that point. What's big prize for you? Fantastic. Um, so don't do that. Your second option is to attack the point sort of opposite you. That would be the one in the upper right at the 3 o'clock. That's more of a 2 o'clock position. Um, so I can attack that. That's kind of far away, and of course it's also very close to the opponent. So that's going to be a difficult attack for me, especially on this map. That 
Um, that point is hard to attack because it's on the top of a hill. So they got pretty good um, ability to shoot down on you from that point. So uh, your third option is to help out your allies, specifically in the middle. And I've chosen this for a couple reasons. First, because the armored car that was attacking me sort of headed off sort of into the middle to harass my allies. So I felt a little bit bad about that. If I had put up a better fight on my right, then he wouldn't have to worry about that armored car. So I felt bad about that. And more importantly, uh, the middle is very important on this map. And so I want to... Uh, do as much as I can to at least let us secure the middle. Um, I at least want that to be our point rather than the enemy point. And you'll notice I'm also uh, paying very close attention to where my AT rifleman died, and I'm taking all this stuff, uh, especially taking the AT rifle and the ammo. Always remember to pick up the ammo. Uh, you're only going to get <laughs> a few shots with the AT rifle if you don't bring the ammo. That only holds five bullets, and I had fired at least one before dying. So always uh, grab the ammo. And uh, high-value things like that are very important to keep your keep track of. Pick them up before they uh, go away, and especially in the beginning of the game, um, when you have very few sort of units to worry about, you want to make the most of what you got and scavenge when you can. So uh, that's very important, and so that's what I'm doing. And uh, my support for my ally has not been crucial, but it's been better than nothing. And now we're taking the middle point, so now things are going to look better for us. They have nine points to our two points, and it's 120 points to win. So uh, at this point, I'm trying to figure out where can I best put my people to use, what can I best purchase, and we see this tank sort of rolling out in the middle, and I decide, you know what, maybe it would be a good idea to get an AT gun, because um, my allies don't really seem to have a lot of heavy anti-tank around, so I'm just going to buy a little ZIS-2, 57mm, not too big, not too small. Uh, hopefully just at least give the enemy something to think about, poke at them, uh, shoot them off. They have their sort of infantry support panzer for pretty good armor, but the gun's not the most amazing thing. We could take it out very easily with a tank, but we don't have a tank. We have uh, my AT gun at best. So that's going to take forever to move up to the front. If I had a little vehicle to tow it around, I would, but I don't, so I won't. Um, and uh, I did end up setting up a defense with my rifleman squad here. What I did was I put my riflemen here to build uh, sandbags and stuff, and then I sent the submachine gunners and the squad leader over to the left, because when you buy a normal rifleman squad like this, you get a um, pretty good mix of some riflemen, some submachine gunners, and a machine gun. So um, the submachine gunners, if you're defending a point or something, you know, you can leave the submachine gunners there to defend the point, but basically they're a lot better at attacking, moving and getting close. They have AT grenades, um, they have um, more normal grenades, and they're just, obviously their guns are a lot better at shorter ranges. Here is my first fail. I throw a grenade at the wall, it bounces off the wall, I run away from the bounce, but um, it wasn't so bad because it didn't die. So um, that was bad direct control from me. I was sort of, <laughs> I was taking fire from like three directions, so I was kind of frantic right there, so um, didn't quite have the ability. And I was, of course, very afraid, the reason I didn't just walk out and throw that grenade was I was very afraid of getting mowed down by that tank if I went to the right inside of that house, so um, I think I can be forgiven for that, especially because I got my guy out alive. And um, So yeah, that's what I was talking about. So yeah, um, I recommend splitting off the submachine gunners from the riflemen if you buy a sort of rifleman squad just for a defense like this. I just wanted bodies on my point, uh, something to stop the enemy if they came, and riflemen are really nice for that. They'll pick off enemy infantry as they're charging across the field, stuff like that, especially if the enemy's being lazy. But um, Submachine gunners, eh, if they get them close, they're good to have, but um, I prefer to be more aggressive with the submachine gunners, get them up in the enemy. And um, so now I have this guy named Tikon Petrov. He has healed himself up, and his job is going to be to take out this enemy in the house. But house fighting is very difficult in Men of War. I should really just blow the side off this house, because otherwise I have to walk in and boom, I'm dead. Um, another option would have been to direct control and try and walk in there. That's also kind of hard. Um, it's it can be fairly fiddly trying to get this stuff. Um, so here's my allies T34 runs out into the middle, and I'm like, holy shit, I gotta support you. So um, I'm just going the uh, easy route, blowing the side off that house like I should have in the first place. And um, I, I do this both because I was tired of that guy in the house, and second because my ally just ran the T34 bang smack right in the middle. And so he really needed infantry support, ASAP. Just do as much as I can to clean out all the enemies around it, because you never want to get a tank surrounded by a bunch of infantry. That just puts your opponent in a perfect position. Because, um, <laughs> so like a year ago, I don't know, long ago, I had this uh, Men of War video on YouTube. Obviously, it's still there, like the rest of my Men of War videos. Um, it was some match where I was fighting tanks or something, and people were giving me advice about how to fight the tanks and something. And one guy um, posted a comment, on the, um, I w maybe I was whining about heavy tanks. Here's the pretty T-34, by the way. I hope you were looking at that. That's a new texture. Um, 
I was whining maybe about tanks, and one guy posted a YouTube comment. He's like, killing tanks is easy. Just run infantry at it from, like, six sides at once and hit it with AT grenades, and it won't be able to respond. And I'm like, dude, just try doing that. Like, try that in a game and tell me how it works. Because, frankly, if you try and run six infantry at all sides from an enemy tank, here's what's going to happen. First, three of the infantry are going to be dead before you start, because half the size of the enemy tank are going to be covered by the enemy like infantry and stuff so three of your infantry are never going to make it and then the other three are just going to get shot from the tank because they're vaguely in front of the tank the tank's got machine guns on the front so that never works but if you drive the tank in between a bunch of enemy infantry so you surround yourself then they literally can run at you from six angles so the three running it from the front or the one running from the front and the two running from the side that your turret's pointing to whatever they're going to get shot but then the other three are going to make it because you're not going to have any infantry support you're going to be literally in the middle of enemy infantry so don't do that don't run into enemy infantry and if you see your ally doing this um trying to blitzkrieg the enemy or something support them send your infantry up and uh help them so here's this knocked out panzer IV. i've scavenged the uh dynamite from i've been sort of grenade fighting with these people i ran around behind the panzer IV. I shot a guy threw a couple grenades now i'm checking some dynamite let's watch how this works oh yeah to get that smokestack Fucking smokestack. Still smoking pretty well though. Um, so, if you notice, about the time that it lagged and I zoomed in on the T-34, one of the enemies quit. So you can basically assume we're going to win this game. Unfortunately, there's probably not going to be high tension anymore with one of the enemies controlled by an AI. Um, not to say the AI is like the worst thing in the world, but it can't really match the supreme tactical power of uh, even a retarded human player, which, let's be honest, 99% of us cannot play Men of War Assault Squad. Like, even I'm not very good at Men of War Assault Squad. Like, I'm normally good, like, not to brag or anything, but I'm normally pretty good at video games that I play. I, like, shoot people and I don't afraid of anything, um, but I'm not so great at Men of War. Like, I'm even good at strategy games, right? But, um, I'm not so great at Men of War. I'm, like, not awful. I'm, like, horrible, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not very good. I'm pretty bad. Um, but luckily, most people are pretty bad. Like, most people are pretty bad at all video games. Um, and in fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm good at so many video games, is because the standards are so fucking low. Um, I'm not sure why that reference, by the way, sprinted over to the left behind that house when he finished uh, building the sandbags. I guess he wanted to regroup with his squad or something. Tycho, move up the right side. That's exactly what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is set up a fire base here, um, a bunch of sandbags, and then a couple of riflemen and machine guns, um, and while well, the rest of my people move down the road. And then, right as I do this, it's like the enemy shows up, and I'm like, well, then, let's shoot him. Um, so, you notice how fairly inaccurate the submachine guns are at this long distance. I am getting some hits and some kills. The Mosin killed somebody, and it looks like this guy sprinted out largely to lay uh, barbed wire or a razor wire, or whatever the fuck that is. Um, and it's actually good that I got some fire in on him, because that means there's some gaps there. Otherwise, I'd have to buy a vehicle, or someone with dynamite or AT grenades or something to blow my way through, because that's just, that's just impassable to infantry, unless you do something about it. So luckily, I caught him before he could um, finish it completely and set up a line. So here comes a half-track. It's going to mow my, all my people down, but luckily, I can just get out of there. And remember, way back when, when I picked up the AT rifle from uh, the middle of nowhere. I was sending that guy over to shoot the half-track, but um, of course he's too slow. And remember, also way back when, when I bought that AT gun, that turned out to maybe not have been the best purchase, but uh, now it gets me a half-track, so um, immediately I'm going to reposition the AT gun, because now the enemy knows where it is. The, uh, I didn't have to end up moving the AT gun in, because uh, my ally sent in that T-34, which did so well. Broke right through. Um, and here's here's a treat. A guy's got a rifle, and he's right around a corner. So anytime a guy with a rifle is right around a corner, you can basically be guaranteed a kill if you go around a corner with a submachine gunner, because bam, executed. Um, no problem. Um, I like the Russian voices all these people talk in. The developers for Armed Assault 2 just released DLC. It's the Czech, Czech Army DLC, like the Czech Republic former Czechoslovakia. And I, th I just thought that was funny. They like, our first DLC is gonna be like Great Britain. Our next one's gonna be, well, what do you think? Uh, let's go with Czechoslovakia. Or the former Czechoslovakia. We gotta get those guys in. Our game's not gonna be done until we've got the Czechs. And I'm sure a lot of people in Czech, the Czech Republic play Armed Assault. Games like this, games like Armed Assault and Men of War and Stalker and 
complex Eastern European games, The Void, and things like that, they do really well. Or King's Bounty, they do really well overseas. People are, oh, um, simulation games. Isle 2 Sturmovic. People, people in Europe just are smarter, I think. They have bigger brains. I don't know. They like more complex video games. In America, it's like, fucking Call of Duty, Black Ops, man, Gears of War, rawr, yeah, shoot someone with a giant fucking machine gun, rip their head off in God's War, shit like that. And then in Eastern Europe, it's like, we play Crusader Kings 3, and it's got like 8,000 menus, and you can marry the Duchess of Barabia, and she does Baravian duchy things. So I bought some Marines. Um, largely because um, their uniforms are just adorable. Um, no, that's not. That's not. That's maybe not. Let's just say they wear blue. But they also do some fantastic damage at longer ranges. They have people who are really good with their rifles and with their machine guns. They come with uh, SVT-40s. A lot of them, those are the semi-automatic rifles, which is just fantastic. It's all the benefits of a bolt-action rifle, all the damage and the accuracy and stuff, but it fires faster than Sonic the Hedgehog runs. Obviously, Sonic the Hedgehog does not fire. He doesn't use any guns for some ridiculous reason. Um, Shadow the Hedgehog uses guns, I think. That was like a edgy, sort of darker Sonic character that they made to appeal to. God knows what group of people wanted a darker, edgy hedgehog. I shouldn't be talking about any of this, because I've literally never played a Sonic the Hedgehog game for more than 10 minutes. Um, I wonder if Sonic the Hedgehog is big in Eastern Europe. Do they have hedgehogs in Europe? Let's check Google. European hedgehogs. While you watch me, I think advance down the street is what I'm trying to do. Um, European hedgehog. Wikipedia. The European hedgehog, Aranicaeus europaeus, also known as common hedgehog, is a hedgehog species found in northern and western Europe. So, yes, but not in eastern Europe. Um, it's in Russia, but just the western part of Russia. So... Maybe no, maybe the people who play IL-2 Sturmovic are not the same people who play Sonic the Hedgehog. He wouldn't be called Sonic the Hedgehog, though. He'd have some Eastern European name. Sonic G... Il... No, Sonic G... I don't... I don't know how you turn Sonic the Hedgehog into anything other than Sonic... The Hedgehog. What's he in Japanese? Maybe he's originally Japanese. So this has been a long and laborious uh, advance up to the enemy, partially because this razor wire is blocking a few of my avenues of attack, and partially because uh, he's just dug in a lot better than... Well, he's not dug in. He's just got some great cover. Um, happily enough, infantry in this game are very good at using cover, and cover is very good at using infantry. Um, oh, and there's fucking mines here, right? Remember, I saw some mine layers long ago. This is also why I'm going super slow. I have this mine dude advancing up. Hilariously enough, that T-60 did not hit a mine. It got AT grenaded because he decided to run close to the enemy cover where the infantry is. I don't know why he did that. Big gun, says Swiss Canada. And I'm like, what? Big gun? Oh, fuck. That's a big gun. That's a Flak 88, which was built for anti-aircraft fire. But the Germans quickly realized that a giant fucking gun is pretty good at a lot of stuff, including anti-tank. So they just pointed it down and started shooting people. And so yes, it turns out there's mines there. The mines killed half my people, and the Flak 88 killed the other half. Or it's a Flak 37 88 millimeter gun. I'm not sure what the designation is. It's just blowing me apart. So um, I'm gonna have to have find some way to assault this thing. And it's a fucking hill. Like I said, uh, uh, go back in the video if you don't believe me. Early in the video, I said this place is hard to assault because it's a hill. Yeah, fucking hill. Big annoyance. Not only does he have these nice little houses and um, walls to hide behind, but he's got a fucking hill which he puts a flak 88 on, so this is going to be tough for me to attack, especially now that the right is blocked off. Looking back, um, here's this AT grenade, or AT uh, rifle guy who's still alive, by the way. Can't shoot for shit for some reason, but uh, manages to nail the crew on this hilarious looking... That truck is such a funny looking thing. Um, watch this. Watch this part here. My opponent runs this squad down here, but um, I have these three marines behind the building, and then one or two people over on the right, I don't know what they are, and basically they just cut down the entire enemy. Oh, there's four marines, actually. But um, basically just cut down all the enemy infantry, so always be careful when you're moving up your infantry. I'm not sure if earlier in the video you are like, Tycho, stop being so slow, moving up the road, you just got to attack. But notice how quickly you can get cut down just by infantry, not by mines and by Flak 88s and by 
machine guns or anything, just infantry hanging out, chilling behind a building. They see you running, they can just shoot you if you're not shooting back. So you really got to be careful in your assaults. I'm always advocating faster, faster, more intense, attack more, attack more, but uh, you do it wrong and you just get yourself fucking slaughtered and watch basically any of my YouTube videos and you can see this happening to me. So um, there's always wisdom and moderation. You just got to probably use less moderation than you're accustomed to because people in video games are often very timid they don't want to die they don't want their units to die it's like nothing fucking happens it's not real life let your people die no big fucking deal um mr marine survives throws that at grenade um that was not to kill the guy that was just to open up the uh, wall so you can kill the guy. Remember, AT grenades and dynamite and other explosives can be used to shape the terrain just as much as they can be used to make big bada booms because shaping the terrain gives you control over what sorts of things you can shoot at, and what sorts of things can shoot at you. And uh, that's what's so amazing about Men of War, it's this dynamic battlefield that's always changing and um, you can use that to your advantage. So we're doing pretty well. Uh, there's three of them, or two of them versus three of us, so that's certainly helping. And um, Opponent not doing a great job attacking on the right. Sometimes he sends little things. He sent uh, a couple of worthless trucks to scout. That's nice, I guess. If you don't need the truck, might as well scout with it. Uh, get rid of your... Um, get it off your pop cap. But um, also sent that infantry squad. But aside from that, he's content to sit back with his black 88, which is not the best strategy, considering he's going to lose if he just keeps doing that. So, um... I don't know if I checked my AT guns ammo just now, if I checked it a while ago, or if I haven't checked it yet, but I remember at some point in this game checking my AT guns ammo, and it was out of HE, so I was considering buying an ammo track, but I'm like, that's too much money for just an AT gun, and frankly, I do need something to assault this hill, so yes, I do buy... No, I don't buy a Katyusha. I look at a Katyusha, and I'm like, no, no thanks. Um... I buy some minesweepers. I'm like, I could buy a Katusha and blow the shit out of that hill, or I could sweep all the mines and walk towards it. So let's try sweeping the mines, because I'm nothing if not fucking stingy with my points. So if I can ever buy a cheaper thing, or a more expensive thing would do, uh, I definitely buy the cheaper thing. And look at that! It's a giant fucking AT gun in the middle of the street set up by the Germans. So that's one of the new units added in the patch. I'm pretty sure last time I said this I was completely wrong. I said some Russian artillery piece was new, and no, it's not new. It's older than time immemorial. Um, that pack 43 I'm pretty sure is new, and it's big. New and big, just like your new mom that your dad married, because your old mom was too fat, but he married a fatter woman, so your mom's fat no matter what. Nothing you can do about it. Um, I'm not sure what it's doing there, he's worried about tanks attacking, I guess, which, uh, looking back now is probably, um, a hint that he might not have any AT mines there if he's so worried about enemy tanks. Maybe he's just got a lot of anti-personnel mines, even though I know, I'm pretty sure I saw a combat engineer AT mines previously, so I thought he had laid both sorts, but, um, anyways, are these partisans? I can't remember. No, it looks like a normal squad, because one of the guys has a machine gun. Um, they get behind this, these walls, and these are pretty good cover, and in fact, they're good enough cover that we have a machine gun shooting at us, or maybe that's an STG-40, no, it's a machine gun, I think, um, shooting at us, and we're not all dead yet. What we are all dead yet is from the, uh, Flak 88, stupid Flak 88 blowing the crap out of me. That's, the thing is, I'm really close to it. Like, look how close I am. That house is just a few, like, less than 100 meters away from the hill. So he's got a really nice position for shelling me. Um, and I can't just make a mad dash for him, because, of course, he's got that mind um, the heck up. But the problem is he's paying for this huge defense, and he's paying for it by not having attacked me ever. Like, I could have set up my own huge defense on my point, but that wouldn't have gotten me anything. Instead, I've thrown all my resources into attacking him, which means the best he can do is set up a bunch of... He, now I'm out of it, H-E. Uh, set up a bunch of mines and a flak 88 and just sit there and hope I don't, like, do anything evil to him. And so my ally buys a Katusha and starts making this guy pay for it. Only kills two soldiers, two people manning the flak 43 and I say Raffle that was my idea because at some point earlier that I neglected to mention I bought a Katusha I was just like you know what if he's really just gonna sit there and defend this point um I'm gonna blow it up did I I don't know I think I've seen the sniper by now this is why I'm shooting over to the right there's a sniper over here and in fact I just killed him if you're watching the kill things I killed a bunch of paratroopers and a veteran sniper um 
he, he, that sniper had been picking off a lot of my people and probably also scouting for the Flak 88 if nothing else. So I really needed to level that out. So I used a Katusha Barrage to kill him and all the infantry around him and then another one started to clear out the Flak 88. So now I'm moving in again, hoping that I've caught at least some of these mines in the Katusha Rocket Barrage. Interesting move by my opponent sent in a scout car to tow the Pack 43 away because it was decrewed. Love to see that. What he could have also done, send in the scout car get one of the crew out of the scout car, put him behind the Pack 43, then drive off, then eventually send in someone else to crew it too, so it's got a full complement so they can drag it away. But that would have given him some firepower rather than him just having to retreat, and this is a bad place to retreat from because you'll notice I'm moving in on this thing. Um, I think I've decrewed the 88, it's tough to know. Um, and you'll notice I am going very slowly. Um, I'm using leapfrog tactics, sending so half my people ahead while the other half fire, but it turns out there's still mines. Still a lot of mines, and hilariously, ironically enough, those were my mine sweepers who just died in those explosions, and most of them, they're disintegrated, so they lose their mine detectors, but luckily, somehow, like some, by some miracle of nature, one mine detector survived just behind all my people, so that guy gets to pick it up. This guy's name is Stepan Taras... Stepan Tarasov? Tarasov. And um, he's, his job is to mine sweep, because clearly running, like just sprinting, ain't gonna do it. Um, on the list of things you want to do, sprinting face first into a minefield is very low on the list. And look at all those fucking mines. I don't know about people that play like this. It's just, like, you're probably gonna hold that point, and if not forever, then at least for a while, but honestly, you're only gonna hold that point. Like, it's all mines and everything. It's like, shit, man, put some, like, pressure around the enemy. Do something other than just sit there with mines. So this is dangerous. I'm moving my Katusha up a bit, not because it's gonna get shot, but because there's a there's a building in front of it, and if I'm careful, I'm gonna hit the building when I shoot rockets. So um, this time I do kill one of my tank crew who is standing by the Katusha with a rocket, but that blew up the building that it hit, so then the rest went through. So I do two Katusha barrages basically directly on this thing. I figure that's better. Look, you can see that collapsed building in front of it. I killed the tank crew on that uh, AT gun, by the way, so um, careful when you fire artillery like that. Um, especially rocket artillery, which has a, um, some deviance when it shoots a cone of fire sort of thing. Um, so, again, assaulting this point, and um, it looks like he's recruited the Flak 88, so this is just a hard point to attack. See, there's so much open space, there's an, a ring of open space around the point, so that's a killing field for them defending it. And then these buildings that are just in front of it, it's a nice place for me to hide, but it's also a nice place for him to hide. You saw how hard it was for him, for me to clear him out. And, um, really it's the open space around that hill that just makes it so deadly to assault. So that's a great place to defend. I guess I can't fault him for defending it so hard in the first place. It's such a good place to defend. But now that I think about it, I totally can fault him. Because it's such an easy point to defend, he shouldn't have needed to throw all those resources into it. All those mines and stuff. It's like, just stick, like, a machine gun on the top, okay? Like, even a heavy machine gun if you want. Put some sandbags around it. Bam! You're done. You're done. Maybe put a mortar behind your line so when someone charges the machine gun, they start taking fire. Bam, you're done. You don't need a Flak 88 and a minefield and an AT gun and a 6 infantry and a sniper. Maybe you can put a sniper and two AT guns, a truck and another truck, and I don't know what the fuck is going on. Because um, you're just asking for it. You're going to be artillery bait, and at the very least you're not going to be able to assault. So that's my thoughts on the matter. And that Marine just did like a six double triple black flip after being killed. And I don't know what this guy's doing. <laughs> he's like marauding with his scout car and dropping off a back 43, and he's like, oh, suck it. I'm going to drop off an AT gun and mow you down while I do it. And I'm like, what is going on? I have my AT rifle shooting at it, I think, or my AT gun shooting at it. I'm just like, dude, I don't, I'm going to get shot. I can't charge him, notice. All this barbed wire is in the front, so he's just going to mow me down. Here's my AT rifle. Um, Vzevolod Lukin. Vzevolod Lukin picks it up, but, um... Looks like he was waiting for that, because he gets away, and Zvevlad Lukin is not able to shoot, is able to shoot, not able, there's a, there's a wall in the way, Zvevlad Lukin stands up, but now it's driven away, no, I got a re quick reposition, oh no, he's going for the Katusha, drive the Katusha away, what am I going to do, he's going to kill the Katusha, oh, he's killed all the people in it, luckily the thing's still alive, um, did he kill the AT gun? It said he did, but... 
I don't see it's not dead. Luckily he just sort of chilled out and then I'm like, okay, kill it with your AT grenade. Unfortunately the game treats Molotovs as AT grenades, so I'm like, sweet, you're dead, and I throw it and it turns out to be a Molotov. Uh it does set one guy on fire. I think there's one guy left inside. Um maybe the gun's damaged too. It said main gun damaged a while ago, but that didn't stop it firing. Um So anyways, we're gonna win. We have 160 points. And that's the end of it. So, um, I'm playing through Bioshock and Bioshock 2 soon. I'm going to replay both those games. Would you guys be interested in watching a Let's Play? I'm not sure if that would be, like, boring to the max or not. So if you care either way, post in the comments. Otherwise, if you don't give a shit, you're like, I'm just here for the Men of War, then that's fine. I'll just keep posting Men of War whenever I play Men of War. Um, it would be a mix of jokes and gameplay commentary, like game design criticism is what it would be. So, um... For my opponents, I would say be more aggressive and don't have one of your players quit midway through. That's always a very bad strategy. Never quit. 